Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will be showing you how to sew this elastic button loop trim. Let's get into this. So the first thing we're going to do is use the back of the pattern. Fold the fabric twice and cut the pattern out. Do that to all the pieces. Then sew a half inch seam allowance all around the fabric, but do not backstitch. If you want, you can sew your dart as a French seam or cut some of the extra fabric off. Next, cut four strips of fabric two inches wide on a straight grain. These strips will be the bias binding to cover the raw edges. Sew all the strips a half inch. Then cut two strips of fabric two inches wide, but this time cut it on the bias. This will be for your armhole curve. Here are some elastic button loop trims. As you can see, there are different types of button loops. Some of them are further apart and some of them are not. They also come in different colors. Let me show you how to sew it. First, put the trim on the seam allowance like this. Put some pins so it's secured while you're sewing it because these elastic loops are tricky to sew. You have to really take your time sewing them. I like to sew it slowly and sometimes I like to hand crank the sewing machine because if the needle goes in one of the loops, it can stretch the button loop when a needle comes back up. Here is an example. As you can see, the needle is about to stitch down on the loop, but when it comes up, it wants to take the elastic with it. And if it does, it will pull the elastic out of its place and stretch it out. And that, my friend, will be an ugly, ugly mess. <laughs> and we all don't want that, especially when we are using illusion mesh. When you take your time, the elastic loops will look like this, nice and neat. If this video was helpful to you so far, please give it a like and subscribe for more free tutorials. Thank you for your support on the channel. We appreciate it. Now let's get back into the video. The next step is to sew the binding. Put the binding stitch line on top of the bodice stitch line and sew on that line slowly so that the needle doesn't pull the elastic loops out the trim. Then cut off about one fourth of the seam allowance and turn this over like this. After that, sew right here at the edge. So far, this is what it looks like. Next, sew the binding on top of the bodice line like this. Now cut off about one fourth of the seam allowance and turn the binding over. Then sew it at the edge like this. Next is the armhole. Put your half inch bias binding stitch and put it on top of your armhole stitch. Sew right on top of that curved line. Now, when it comes to armholes and necklines, there are different ways to sew them. Here we have A and B. If you want your outfit to be very transparent, then A is your best choice because you won't see the armhole or neckline stitches. Remember, if you sew three or more pieces of mesh together, the more the color gets darker. B is good too. As you can see, it's more structured, but you will see the neckline and armhole. I use both. It depends if I'm putting applique to hide the armhole and neckline. So you can decide what's best for you. The next step is to trim off one fourth of the seam allowance and flip it over, then sew it at the edge like this. Repeat the same sewing process for the binding on the other side of the back bodice. So here is the final look guys. Do you like it? Let me know what you think in the comments. Now you can sew your buttons and your pretty applique. I use half inch pearl buttons and I sewed the applique. You can use this for wedding dresses. I also made the other one. If you want to learn how to make button loops with illusion mesh, you can check it out right here. Go ahead and click on that and I'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to practice, practice, practice. Bye, everybody.